Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. How about this? The Philadelphia Phillies put together a really solid victory against the Atlanta Braves. A 5 nothing shutout. And Jake Arrieta, did he go back in time? Did he use a time machine to go back to the year 2015? Because that was the 2015 Jake Arrieta. Six shutout innings. That sinker sitting right where he wants it to be. 93 miles per hour or so. Getting some ground ball action in play. I mean, we all make fun of Jake Arrieta at times for being this ground ball type pitcher in the year 2020 in this ballpark and it's like dude that's not gonna fly anymore that's not gonna work but he put it together and this is coming off of an outing that I truly respect it wasn't a dominant performance against the Yankees in his first outing but I did think that he had another inning to go but Joe Girardi wanted to keep him safe because of his age and the fact that it was his first outing of the season I thought he did have another inning in that first outing against the Yankees but he followed it up with a super strong stat line and he struck out six Jake Arrieta getting some strikeouts involved as well his stat line six innings three hits one walk six K's and 89 pitches I couldn't believe what I was seeing I saw a third inning where he's getting out the side bang 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 I honestly thought he had a Cubs jersey on at one point that's how terrific he was in this game. I mean, the command was there. Everything was there. All of it. Everything was there out of Jake Arrieta. And I don't know if we have truly seen that in Philadelphia with him. There might have been one or two times where you saw a decent outing like this, but they don't pop up very often. So I hope that he can build off of this. And I know that we had Scott Lauber, Philadelphia Inquirer's Phillies beat reporter on 97.3 ESPN. And one of the things he brought up to Mike Gill and I was when he's hurt, he's been bad. His numbers have been pathetic when he's hurt and when he's not healthy but when he has been healthy with the Phillies which obviously has been limited time because he has been banged up a bit but when he is healthy his numbers are actually pretty damn decent and I think these last two outings should prove to you that that is the case I just get really hard on him at times because of the fact that his age is getting up there, and he always seems to have some sort of issue at some point. And it doesn't help that at times in the clubhouse, he could be a little annoying and complain about things when it comes to his teammates. But I digress. Look, if you're going to perform like this, I'm all for it. I'm all for this style of Jake Arrieta. And this lineup, it's lethal, okay? You know what the Braves can do. You know what Acuna Jr. can do. Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis. You know what they're capable of doing. So for him to be able to go out there and execute like that, bravo. Not only that, the bullpen, it actually worked again in back-to-back games? Wake me the hell up. Holy hell. Good win for the Phillies. By the way, this episode of Sports Talk with Broads is sponsored by Orbit Energy and Power. They offer flexible financing solutions such as $0 down when going solar. They will make sure you receive all the state and federal incentives available when switching to solar. There's no need for risk and no need for investment. Make sure you check out their information. It is in the description. So, the fourth inning for your Philadelphia Phillies. It was magnificent. JT Real Muto with a moonshot to give the Phillies a one to nothing lead. And then Jay Bruce, also known as my father, hits a bomb to give them a 4 nothing lead. A three-run shot. And that thing was murder. Now, Kyle Wright had a tough day at the office. The Braves pitcher could not really get much going. He did go six innings. Well, that's not fair. It started out the first couple innings being a bit of a duel. So I feel like that's a little unfair to say. But in the fourth inning, the Phillies totally opened up the game. Kyle Wright's stat line, six innings, four earned runs, three walks. It totally turned the corner for the fight and Phillies in that fourth. There was some back and forth action with these pitchers early on, but that JT Real Muto hit and that Jay Bruce hit, it totally opened up the floodgates. And one thing that's huge and should be recognized is in the eighth inning, Bryce Harper had a double. He 
eventually gets knocked in by Didi Gregorius, and that was huge because that gave the Phillies a four to no I'm sorry, a five to nothing lead. And then he didn't have to use Hector Neris when it came to the bullpen, and you get to save his arm. He doesn't have to go into battle, so you can utilize him. Keep in mind, you have a back to back situation, not a back to back situation, a double header on Sunday. So Hector Neris not battling today means a lot. Now, I spoke about the bullpen. I said it actually got the job done. This is what Joe Girardi went with. Alvarez for two and a third. Tommy Hunter for one and a third. Big bounce back effort for him. What he did in the last game was so abysmal, my eyes were bleeding, okay? I wanted to cut my eyeballs out. It was that bad. He was getting squared up by every single hitter, and it was that seventh inning where it was the seventh inning of a doubleheader game, so it was the end of the game, and he did not give this Phillies team a chance in hell once Aaron Nola left the ball game. So it was so abysmal. For him to be able to bounce back, kudos to him, and let's see if he continues to ride that type of flow. Now here's the thing. We need to remember that this team was off for a significant amount of time. They played their three-game series against the Marlins. COVID happened. The Yankees' one game happened. Then they were off. Then they played a doubleheader. I mean, it was a mess, right? So the fact that, hey, they're playing baseball every day, they're getting into a groove, they actually have a schedule, maybe that's the reason why some of these pitchers are able to actually do something. They're able to perform. They're getting some sort of like schedule down for what they're doing when they're not pitching and they're able to get some bullpen sessions in when when it comes to some of these pitchers like that needs to happen for them to get to where they need to be when it comes to the 60 game season so after Hunter they put in Guerra in for that last inning and he was fine he was absolutely fine so we talked about Joe Girardi trying to figure out what exactly his bullpen is and what type of players he can trust in what type of situations. Well, maybe now he's getting a grasp on some things. Alvarez seems to be someone he likes. Clearly Tommy Hunter. We've seen Guerra a couple times as well. I wonder when he's going to use Adam Morgan. The three batter rule totally changes what the lefty specialist is all about. So how will he now be utilized when it comes to this bullpen? Will he only be a lefty-lefty guy? And if he is, what happens when that righty comes up? Now, you really have to hold your hands behind your back, honestly. It's not like you can change the rules at this point. He's going to have to face them. But when is Joe Girardi going to use someone like Adam Morgan? Because I think Adam Morgan does have something to his game that this team could totally benefit from in certain situations. I can't believe I'm saying that. Ask me if I would ever say that, say, two years ago or so. When he had that really dumpster fire type season? Ha! Ha! I would have never thought in a million years. But he's put it together nicely. He's a bullpen arm. All right, here's some things that I didn't like. McCutcheon 0 for 4. Reese Hoskins 0 for 3. But hey, he got a walk. My ass. Scott Kingery 0 for 4. Some of these guys... Wake up. Wake up, and I keep giving Andrew McCutcheon a free pass because he's a veteran, but at some point, production is going to have to matter for these players. I don't know what you're going to do at Reese. Are you going to continue to throw him in that two spot consistently? Are you going to put him in the two spot for the rest of the year and just have him camp out there? Because I can't keep taking these 0 for 3 performances, but hey, he got to walk. Like, I'm sick and tired of it already, and the team is only 4 and 4. I can't put up with this much longer. He's going to have to swing the bat, be aggressive, and actually hit the damn baseball. I'm getting sick and tired of it already. What are you going to do there, though? Remember last season, there was a time where it went McCutcheon, Segura, Bryce, Reese, JT. If you throw him back in the four hole for an opportunity, will his mindset change? Will he not think about the walk? It seems now all he's thinking about is the walk. I swear to you, all he goes up to the plate thinking is, I want to walk. Well, maybe you just put him in the damn four spot and see what the hell happens. Or maybe you put Jay Bruce there the way he's been swinging the sticks. Jay Bruce. Wow. Huge spark plug for this team. 
not just this year and this game, but dated back to last season. We give Matt Klintak a hard time. Does he deserve a little recognition for being able to bring in someone like Jay Bruce? Jay Bruce is a difference maker at times. Jay Bruce is a big piece to this team actually succeeding. I love me some Jay Bruce. He knows how to square up that baseball. Oh, no doubt. It's fun to watch. Now, things I did like. Bryce Harper, two for four. And oh, by the way, one of the greatest defensive plays I've seen in right field in a long time. Here he is, hustling. The hair flowing in the wind. It's just beautiful execution on the hair flow. He dives. He just barely catches it with the tip of his glove. And he slides in slow motion on NBC Sports Philadelphia. How about that for defense? That was a huge knock of his before the signing here in Philly. Oh, he can't play defense. Oh, but he can't play defense. Uh, Excuse me. Since he's been here... His defense has been a plus, and he continues to do it. It's all about the hustle with this guy. I mean, the guy just constantly gives you everything he has when he is playing baseball. He loves the game so much. You could see it in his face. You could hear it in his tone when he speaks about the game. The guy just flat out loves the damn game, and then you can see it in his play every time he's on the diamond. It's incredible. Can't wait for him to be here for the rest of his career. Now, something I just thought of was that sixth inning for Jake Arrieta. I don't know how I was thinking of Bryce Harper. And then, oh, yeah, remember the sixth inning, Broads? But that's how my mind works at times. Sixth inning, he did get some defensive help. So it was first and second, zero outs. Didi, with an unbelievable catch, line drive at shortstop, gets the ball out quick, bang, double play there at second base. Because the runner didn't tag up. He had to hurry his ass back to second base. Try to get in. But no, Didi with the snag. And tossed the second for a double play. Which helped Jake Arrieta eventually get out of that inning. And you know how Arrieta can be sometimes. When he doesn't get defensive help. (laughs) He's not afraid to maybe let everybody know. That they should have made that play out in the outfield. Or in the infield. Or whatever the case may be. Well, he had it in this one. I can't get over it. I can't get over what Jake Arrieta provided for this team. What he did with the location, what he did with some of his secondary pitches, he was all over it. And I never thought that he would be able to put together that type of performance again. I thought those days were long gone. And if he can, if he can do this for a decent amount of time this season, that changes the game when it comes to this starting rotation. Spencer Howard getting the nod for one of these doubleheader games. Not sure yet if it's going to be Vince Velasquez first and then Spencer Howard or Spencer Howard and then Vince Velasquez. But if you could get this Jake Arietta and throw that in with Nola, Wheeler, this Arietta, Spencer Howard, if he can be what we expect him to be, and Zach Eflin at the end of the rotation, it's not terrible. Definitely not terrible. The real question is, can the bullpen hold up? Because two games, while it's nice, that's not selling me, hey, this bullpen can actually do something. Two games is nice. When they were falling apart early on, I claimed even bad bullpens figure it out for some games. Bad bullpens will still win baseball games once in a while. So I asked the question, is this a bad bullpen just winning games once in a while? Or is this a bullpen that's starting to actually have games consistently so they can figure out their game and they can figure out how they need to play and they can make sure their arms are ready and they can be in real-life situations where they can get back to where they need to be. They need to get back on track. That's what we need to figure out. And that's what Joe Girardi needs to figure out. But going back to some positives, as I mentioned, Jay Bruce, he finished with 2 of 4, Didi Gregorius, two hits as well on the day. The Braves are a good baseball team, and this Philly squad, I claimed from the beginning that they were going to be the first team out, even with the expanded playoffs. You're going to get nights like this, and then you're going to get the most frustrating nights and the miserable nights. It's what are you going to get a little bit more? Are you going to get a little bit more of the good nights? Are you going to get a little bit more of the frustrating nights? Because you're going to see some underachieving teams get into the postseason. 
So the underachieving team could still be the Phillies. If they get pitching like this, that could be the difference. So it's not a must win every time Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler's on the mound because you can actually rely on another pitcher. You can actually rely on somebody else. And the fact that I'm this giddy about Spencer Howard getting caught up, that's awesome. I don't know the last time a pitching prospect got me this excited. Aaron Nola? Aaron Nola? How many years ago was that? 2015 or so? I've seen Spencer Howard pitch in this spring training 2.0, and I was very intrigued. I think he has something. I think he can be a difference maker. Long term. Long term. Just like anybody who steps into pro sports, there's going to be growing pains, okay? There's going to be an adjustment period. Let's just throw out some names. Ronald Acuna Jr., Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis. They're professional hitters for a reason, and they crush guys like Nola, Kershaw, Zach Wheeler, Cindergaard. I mean, you name it. I was going to say DeGrom, but nobody really blows up DeGrom. But this Braves lineup will do it to anyone. So I get it if Spencer Howard struggles a bit and has some learning moments. If he hangs one over the plate, it's like, ah, you know? But hey, it's okay. Next time you know, you can't be hanging that over the plate against a Freddie Freeman. I'm just curious to see what's in his repertoire, what he's going to be able to do. Is he going to be able to handle the nerves? If he handles the nerves and looks like Carter Hart, we'll be like, damn, all right, here we go, here we go. But I can't expect that, can I? Is that fair to just expect him to walk in and put that type of performance out there? A stellar seven-inning complete game on a doubleheader action? I am starting to despise this doubleheader. I knew I didn't like it, but now it's, oh, we're not playing because of the tornado watch, which I understand. I don't expect him to play through the tornado, but because they're not playing through the tornado, now we're having a doubleheader. And before, I wouldn't care if there was a doubleheader. It's baseball all day long on a Sunday when it's nine innings. Now it doesn't even seem like a real baseball game. When you look at some of these wins, sure, the Phillies beat the Yankees that one game, that one seven-inning game, but guess what? If it was a nine-inning game and Austin Davis was pitching and allowing all those runs and and allowing that team to come back, and allowing Aaron Judge to hit a homer, they had no chance to winning. It it almost seems like a fluky win for the Phillies just because it was a seven-inning game. And when you look at how many of their games are actually these seven-inning doubleheaders, it's a sick joke. Now, I get it. COVID-19, it's the year 2020, it's better than the alternative, which is no baseball at all. And I totally do agree with that. But it still sucks, and it feels like it is Bush League. It feels like it is a fake baseball game, a Little League baseball game, an American Legion baseball game. I want MLB baseball. I want it to be a full nine innings. If you could play full nine innings during COVID-19, Why can't we play full nine innings if you're going to play two baseball games in a day? Please tell me. I know, I know. It's going to wear out the pitchers, and you're trying to fit 60 games in such a short schedule. I've heard it all. (sighs) Doesn't mean I need to like it, though, because at the end of the day, I don't really like it. What I do like is a 5-0 victory against the Atlanta Braves. What I don't like is the Miami Marlins winning baseball games. (laughs) Now, I do believe they lost to the New York Mets today. Maybe reality's starting to hit. At some point, they're going to fall off. Sort of like how I feel about Phil Gosselin. At some point, he's going to fall off. Same with Andrew Knapp. At some point, Andrew Knapp isn't going to be hitting like the way he's hitting. He was getting praise when it came to those inner squad games and those spring training exhibition games. Andrew Knapp was getting some hits out there. I don't expect that to last long. I don't expect Phil Gosselin to last long, sadly. And I don't expect the Miami Marlins to last long. But they continue to win games. The hell is going on here? It definitely is year 2020. 5 nothing victory. Sign JT? Ha <laughs> ha. Every time he hits a homer, every time he makes a play, 
Philly's Twitter is hysterical. Sign JT! You also have Bryce Harper, what, doing the celebration of signing the contract and then doing their celebration after he hit the one home run the other night. Sign JT! You got the fans screaming outside the ballpark. You also have the horns continuing. I feel like that's going to be a thing every single game now at this point. Every single game, you're just going to have Phillies fans outside of the ballpark. And I'll tell you what, I'm impressed. I'm not going to lie, I'm impressed by those Phillies fans who sit out there every single day because I don't think I would do it. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode. Remember, it is sponsored by Orbit Energy and Power. They are dedicated to making sure your solar project is completed easily and properly by using high-quality materials and trained professionals to get the job done right. They also have water water purification systems, backup energy services, and more. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you next time.